You at home have given me a list of things you think I'll never find in Disney World. I'm here at Magic Kingdom to hopefully prove you wrong. Also, I just received the list. How dare you? I'm at Magic Kingdom and I've just looked at a list for the very first time. This list includes submissions from our followers on Instagram and it consists of things you think I'll never find in Magic Kingdom. You all are testing me today. As always, we've got some great tips and tricks too. Yeah! So I did get here at Rope Drop because I was unsure of how insane this list was going to be. And uh, some of these are difficult. Some of these I, I feel good about. I feel good that we're going to definitely, hopefully, cross off uh, a lot of these. I am rope dropping Adventureland because early entry happened today, as it happens every day. Early entry is where resort guests can get into the park uh, 30 minutes before uh, regular park guests. And here at Magic Kingdom, uh, early entry guests have access to Fantasyland and uh, Tomorrowland. So Adventureland is the land that really has been untouched first thing in the morning, if you know what I mean. Right now, everyone is headed to Jungle Cruise because that is definitely a great strategy for rope drop because that's gonna have, uh, 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 yesterday I saw it at a 75 minute wait for the rest of the day after rope drop. But the first thing on our list is, <laughs> which I feel like this is a dig directly at me, five moments of conflicts. And I know exactly what you're talking about when you say five moments of conflict at Magic Kingdom. I'm a big person who thinks storytelling is incredibly important. And a big part of storytelling is conflict. So we're starting off at Pirates of the Caribbean for our first moment of conflict. We're so early, there's not even a wait time. Pirates of the Caribbean is a slow moving boat ride where you are forced in the middle of a battle between pirates and soldiers as the pirates pillage the town and you are forced to see the reckoning of everything that the pirates is doing. And whether you're on their side or not, hey, that's up to you. That's, you know, choose your own adventure. That's up for you to decide. Now, before we get into why you guys actually selected uh, five moments of conflict to be on this list, Let's, let's start with our first moment of conflict, which is the conflict between the pirates and, and the soldiers. All right, we are headed to row five. Let the conflict begin. Show this of your miserable curve. Jack Sparrow, speak up. Or do you fancy a swim with Davy Jones? Keep still. I'm studying the map. Just a great attraction, all in all. When you think of classic Disney attractions, Pirates of the Caribbean is definitely one of the ones that uh, come up in your fore mind, you know what I mean? Uh, started over in Disneyland, over in California, brought it here. What's funny is that every Pirates of the Caribbean is just a tad different. You know, for example, ours is approximately eight minutes long, you know, and you still do most of the same thing, start off in a cave, uh, go down a hill. But Disneyland's, we're rocking around 15, 16 minutes. And I'm like, wait a minute, hear me out. Why can I have, and uh, whose decision was that? So let's talk about the conflict. Now, I'm pretty sure the reason you you all submitted find five versions of conflict is because there's not a lot of villain representation in the parks anymore uh let's talk about the castle for example friendship fair is a show that takes place right in front of the castle where they're all celebrating their friendship mickey minnie donald goofy and they're inviting their royal friends like tiana rapunzel elsa they're inviting them to celebrate their friendship and nothing happens. They sing a couple songs, but there's no real story. There's no real through line that evokes emotion other than, you know, we're all friends and the music is pretty. In storytelling, in order to tell a good story, you have to have a struggle. A struggle is usually an internal struggle or it's an external struggle, which is a villain. And lately, we have not seen any villains other than they're kind of like keeping it to themselves for Halloween. Halloween is when, you know, villains will go crazy, which kind of makes sense but also in order to tell a good story you, you need you need these characters to struggle a little bit in previous iterations of the castle show the villains would show up just to cause a little bit of chaos and the good guys would say you know what no you know we, we are good 
and we and dreams come true and together with our dreams anything is possible and then the villains would go away that was the struggle and they defeated the struggle that's what makes a good story that was my ramblings of what makes a good story first we start with pirates of the caribbean which there's a clear conflict between the pirates and literally everyone else barbosa townspeople the soldiers Jack Sparrow. They're, they're all, it's, it's all conflict based. We are headed into fantasy land for the next piece of like conflict I could actively think of that had some sort of villain representation. You know, you're gonna laugh at me. And no, it is not the uh, stepsisters from Cinderella who do meet and greet out here from time to time, but Heffalumps, the Heffalumps and Woozles. They're technically in the villains portions of many Disney shows, whether it be stage shows or sing-alongs. Yeah, I'm talking about those VHS sing-alongs. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's still pretty early. See if we can hit up uh, the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. See some conflict, some conflict between Heffalumps and Pooh Bear. This might, this might be a hot take, but I think the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh is probably my favorite ride in Fantasyland. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, I, I just grew up with Winnie the Pooh as a kid. Uh, the nostalgia aspect is big for me. Uh, and I really love the Heffalump section. I did peek down at the list just a tad, so I'm gonna move ahead with one of my um, uh, tasks of list you guys gave me, uh, gave me to do. It said, uh, find Mr. Toad. Now there are two different places you can find Mr. Toad, uh, but the first place is right here at the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Before the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh was here, it was uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. You can still find Mr. Toad's Wild Ride in Disneyland, but that used to be here, right here at this very spot, and they do pay homage uh, to Mr. Toad in this very ride. So let's go check it out. Talk about pure classic childhood nostalgia. I feel like Winnie the Pooh is it. I, I was a, I was an only child uh, until I was 11 or 12. So I mean, I was Christopher Robin, a bunch of stuffed animals, played you know, played make believe. I mean, that was me. So I feel like there's like the, the personal emotional connection there. But there are two Mr. Toad references on. Uh, the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. As soon as you're entering Owl's house, everything is corrupting. If you look to your left, there is a picture of Mr. Toad uh, and Owl, and they're, they're passing off the deed to each other because the deed is the, is the building where they're located. As you're exiting Owl's house, if you look down on the floor on your right, there's actually a picture of uh, that mole character. I think his name is Molly from Mr. Toad's. He's like hanging out with Pooh, and that picture is on the floor. I love that Imagineers constantly are uh, paying homage to the past because they do know it's important to keep moving forward. Disney World, Disneyland, Disney is never completed. Walt Disney said that himself because uh, we got to keep, you know, finding the new best thing, the new technology, the, you know, keeping up with new stories. Okay, next form of conflict. I can't believe I wasn't thinking about it. Um, I, I thought about it while I was on the ride of Winnie the Pooh. Conflict villain, Zerg. Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin is a shooting, slow moving dark ride. When I say shooting, I mean you're shooting your targets and you're trying to see if you can become a galactic hero, see how many points you can score. Now we do have some tips and tricks on that and you can see that video on the uh, secret ride tips and tricks here at Magic Kingdom. Emma is the galactic hero here. She gets, she maxes out the score every time. I'm gonna do my best. I'm not, I'm not as good as she is, but uh, conflict between Buzz, the hero, and Zerg, the villain. That's conflict.
Oh, I did it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did it. Cosmic Commander. I can't believe I did it. I think I jinxed myself. I was like, no way, I'm gonna get Galactic Hero. I can't see, I don't even know, know what it is because I, ne I never get it, but I can't believe I got it. And I'm pretty sure I mastered it. Uh, I'll just tell you, I'll, I'll tell you the, my top three, top three secrets to getting Galactic Hero. When you enter the first room, you'll see a big orange robot on your left. Shoot for the inside of the palm. On his left hand, you'll see a, a Z, shoot that one. Then, when you go into the big room, the pterodactyl and the volcano, just shoot for the top of the volcano. Just keep shooting, like, just keep shooting it as many times as you can. Same, the same thing for the hand. And finally, uh, when you're in the room with all the batteries, you're knocking down batteries, you see Zerg on your right, aim for the very bottom of his ship. It'll come to a point, it's like a cone. Aim for the very bottom of it, bottom of it just shoot it as many times as you can. Uh, that's what I did this time, and I got Galactic Hero. Here's another thing uh, that I saw on the list that I feel like we can knock out while we're here, and it's find a Star Wars merch at Magic Kingdom. Star Wars merch is typically mostly available at Hollywood Studios, uh, specifically in Galaxy's Edge, but really all over Hollywood Studios. But this is Star Traders. You're probably going to be able to find a Star Wars merch pretty quickly. Now, you can probably find like Grogu stuff and Magic Band Plus Star Wars stuff in the Emporium on Main Street, USA. But oh, look right away. I see it. There is a... Princess Leia, oh, well, Stormtrooper, C-3PO. Um, oh, and there's Yoda, uh, Yoda right there. Is that Star Wars merch we were looking for. For the most part, at these generic Disney stores, they just sell generic Disney things. There's no specific in-world theme. For example, you're not gonna find Finding Nemo stuff at Galaxy's Edge or Finding Nemo stuff at, at Pand Pandora. That's very in-world. But these are the shops that you're gonna find really, um, any kind of Disney uh, merch. You got Stitch here, you got Bruno. Also, but I was looking at this, by the way. These, I love these uh, spirit jerseys. Very into spirit jerseys lately. Conflict, well, not really conflict, but they, they have caused conflict in the past. I don't think this counts. Does this count? No, I don't think so. It's all right, it's all right. I was trying to think of more simple conflicts. Like maybe a conflict between friends. And it made me think of Bibbidi Bobbidi No, I'm kidding. I'm just trying to get around the crowd. It made me think of PhilharMagic. PhilharMagic is a 3D show where Mickey and his friends are putting on a concert, uh, a, a, a PhilHarmonic concert, if you will. But Donald has some other plans. He ends up stealing Sorcerer Mickey's hat. And he ends up being whooshed through all these different uh, classic Disney songs and scenes. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, not only is it 3D, but there are some water effects, some smells. Makes it a little more 4D. I did look at the list a little bit further, and there is one that I that brought a tear to my eye. Um, yes, it made me a tad emotional. So I'm really excited uh, to show you what that is uh, in a second. I'll probably save that one for a little bit because that's gonna take some moving around. But what's funny is no one included anything about snacks. <laughs> no one said anything about find this kind of food because it's 10 o'clock and I'm hungry. Come, can I find a snack in Magic Kingdom? ran into this awesome family. Shout out to Andrew and Fam. We were just talking about, you know, who Fill Our Magic is right for, and I definitely think this is definitely someone that anybody can watch. One, it's cool. Two, it is super easy and chill for anybody who just wants to get out of the hot sun for a hot second. It's good songs, classic Disney movies, and you've got Mickey Mouse and Donald. I mean, it's de definitely, this is one for everybody. But there's definitely some conflict. Mickey's here with it with his Disney Philharmonic, and Donald has plans of his own, and they definitely, there's a tussle. They, 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 they get into some pretty frustrating times. Especially because, you know, Donald just completely causes chaos. That is definitely conflict. You see the storytelling here? You see the through line? This is what I'm talking about. 
Now here's a fun tip if you really want to immerse yourself in Philhar Magic. I always recommend sitting in the first uh, seven rows because uh, the screen actually completely wraps around you almost 180 degrees. And if you're sitting in the first seven rows, whether you look left or right, uh, the screen will be around you. So it's a more immersive experience. Lots of conflict between that duck and that mouse. I was gonna use the Haunted Mansion as a last form of conflict because it's quite the conflict happening here in Haunted Mansion, but it looks like they're down and they might have had to evac because they're not letting anybody in. But while we're here, I am gonna go, gonna go through this exit so I can show you the other place where they pay tribute to Mr. Toad. All the way up at the very top, where you can see it, there is Mr. Toad. He is a headstone. Here lies Mr. Toad. Now, the, the headstone where Mr. Toad was was basically the pet cemetery. And uh, what you're supposed to do is to pay your respects to the animals that are, are long gone. Mr. Toad is one of those animals that used to be here, the Magic Kingdom, no longer there. So they're paying homage to him there. So two places where you can find Mr. Toad, or, or tributes to Mr. Toad, here at the Magic Kingdom. And you guys said, I bet you can't find an attraction with a walk-on line in the middle of the day. And I'm here to say, what do you call an attraction? <laughs> because technically, Swiss Family Treehouse is an attraction. Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse is a walk-through attraction based on the Swiss Family Robinson story, where they were stranded on an island and the only way to survive is they had to build this gorgeous treehouse. And you can typically find it to having uh, zero to little weight. I I've never, ever seen a line for this in the history of ever. However, be aware that if you are visiting the Swiss Family Robertson Treehouse, that you better be prepared to uh, do a bit of climbing, a little bit of walking. There is a lot of stairs. So it is definitely not accessibility friendly. But a huge pro is that it has one of the best views of Magic Kingdom that you can just walk to. And that would be it, look at that. Just look how gorgeous that is. You got Tron, Space Mountain, and the castle. Some trees, just beautiful. That's why it's the Jungle Lookout. Now there aren't many rides that, are, that you can find that are gonna be a walk on in the middle of the day. However, attractions, absolutely. So there is the, uh, there's this. The Carousel of Progress is a great uh, attraction that has, that, that typically has uh, little to no weight. The Enchanted Tiki Room is a, an attraction that you can find zero, zero to little weight uh, in the middle of the day. But that's why we say don't ride your favorite attractions, your must-do attractions in the middle of the day, because it's not gonna be a walk-on. It's probably gonna be a pretty lengthy, Wait. Always have a good rope drop strategy. Uh, so that way you can ride your favorite rides, your must-do rides, the first two hours of the day or the last two hours of the day. Which one is better though? And for that, you can check out our video, first two versus last two, up on the channel now. While I'm here in Adventureland, there's another task that I think I'm gonna cross off the list here. You said find something in Magic Kingdom that's under $5. Yes, Magic Kingdom can be pretty expensive. You just have to know where to look and what to get. If you're if you're balling on a budget, and that's fine. I'm, I got a I got a newborn. I'm falling on a budget. So here is something that is definitely under five dollars. I certainly don't think this is breaking news. I just think it shows how much I don't actually eat when I'm here at the parks, or how much I bring protein bars and things like that. Uh, the the Dole Whip cups. Used to be $4.99 without tax, uh, and now they're around $5.20. So I think I'm gonna have to move on from that one and uh, move on to something that uh, means a great deal to me. Next on the list, and I absolutely love this one, find five quiet spots for people who get overwhelmed or have sensory problems. The reason this submission is so important to me, and I really appreciate whoever submitted this because I always think this is uh, really important to talk about, uh, is that uh, my sister is differently able than any time uh, we come to the parks, uh, whether it be Disney or Universal, we do need time uh, to uh, find quiet spots uh, to relax because overstimulation isn't good for 
what she has. So it's always important for me to make sure to locate those spots before we're even at the park. That way we, we have safe locations. So that way we know, okay, something's about to happen. An episode is about to happen. Uh, we know where to go and where to find these locations. So I really appreciate the fact that we're even talking about this and thank you to whoever submitted this. The Liberty Bell Riverboat, I think, is a great, uh, quiet place, uh, sensory place that is, one, it's uh, it's kind of relaxing because it's on the water, just there's some serenity to it, I suppose, and it is still an attraction, so you don't feel like you're missing a bunch of, uh, you know, you're not, you're not wasting a bunch of time, even though that quiet time is never a waste, truly. Uh, inside of the Liberty Bell Riverboat, there is a, uh, there are some actual rooms, uh, that are uh, that have couches, that have these cool pictures that you can look at. Uh, they're shaded. They're they're, in, they're technically indoors. And the Liberty Bell takes you all the way around Tom Sawyer Island. Uh, you can see some really unique views of the Magic Kingdom and Tom Sawyer Island. You can see some Native American uh, kind of scenescapes. But if you're ever looking to still ride an attraction and something where you just need to relax, uh, calm down, some quiet time, definitely Liberty Bell Riverboat is something I always recommend to people. It's something that we do. Uh, so yeah. Liberty Bell River Boat, checking that one off the list. So I gotta find four more. Uh, so let's keep rocking. I think I know where I'm gonna go next and I'm gonna cross off two on this list. We're gonna head to Tom Sawyer Island. Something to note here is that when the Liberty Bell River Boat is going across, uh, they do have to stop the raft boats because the only way to get to Tom Sawyer Island is by this uh, log raft. Tom Sawyer Island is only open for a limited amount of time. It opens around every day at around, uh, around 11 and then closes at dusk when the sun is setting. Now on Tom Sawyer Island, if you're familiar with the adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn, uh, it's basically a big tribute to that story. You can see uh, Aunt Polly's refreshments, even though they don't actually sell any refreshments, which Breedlove is very angry about. Uh, there, there are some forts you can play in, uh, some playgrounds, uh, some caves, definitely a huge exploration island. All right, we have made it to Tom Sawyer Island, and we're going to cross this off as one of our uh, quiet places. There's a lot of quiet, uh, serene places that you can just kind of get away from the crowds, get away from the craziness of Disney World. If you brought food or even some picnic tables up here as well, a playground for younger ones to play on some really great picnic tables and it's shaded and it's quiet. All right, you see that? Yeah, and I'll show you, this is my favorite picnic table to come to if I'm trying to get away from the crowds. Obviously you've got the playground right here, your two picnic tables, but if you keep going back this way, there's one that's hidden all the way over here. And it's by water. So y'all know how much I love water. I'm a water baby. And it's just a rushing, small little waterfall, a bridge. As much as I love to call this a hidden gem, it's not a hidden gem. Everybody knows what Tom Sawyer Island is. But because it's not attached to a popular IP, it's really not visited that often. So you can definitely get away. I mean, it's almost noon and I'm basically here with like 10 of my closest friends. And look, look at this view, this is gorgeous. You can bring food, however, you can't bring anything that's open container, uh, meaning like, uh, you know, you can't have a basket of fries because they won't let you on, uh, on that raft. You know what I mean? Uh, it's gotta be baggy sandwiches that you have in your bag and chips and things like that. Uh, or if you wanna put a bucket of fries uh, into your bag, that's fine. It just can't be anything that's out. While we are here on Tom Sawyer Island, we're gonna cross off another uh, thing that you think I would never be able to find on this list. <laughs> this one made me laugh. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights is coming up soon. Myself, Quincy, and Emma, we're all gonna be there on opening night. Opening night! To review it all, the video will be up on the channel relatively soon once it is opened. But um, you asked me to find something at Magic Kingdom that is scarier than Halloween Horror Nights. Clearly we've got some Halloween Horror Nights fans here, but there's not really a lot of scary things here at Magic Kingdom. However, there is something that is the most 
suspenseful, spooky, and I'm not talking about the Haunted Mansion. I'm talking about things, you know, okay, I know every single one of you know what I'm talking about when I say this, so do not tell me otherwise. Imagine this. It's 2 a.m. in your house. You have to walk down a long hallway to go to the bathroom. You go to the bathroom, everything is fine. You shut off the light, you start walking, and then you just feel like a that something isn't right. So then you start to walk a little faster, and then you start sprinting back to your bedroom. That's the kind of feeling this thing gives me. The Tom Sawyer Island Caves. There are a few Tom Sawyer Island caves here, uh, and they all represent different things in the Tom Sawyer uh, story. But we're gonna start here in the escape tunnel. Watch your step. Oh, immediately I hate this. Okay. Okay. Now these caves are not super accessible. And they are, um, okay, they are incredibly spooky because it's just silence and dark corners and things that I don't do well with, even at night. Oh, see, I don't, don't trust that. Don't trust that. Even at, oh, I hate this. Even at night, um, I like need to sleep with like the TV on because I hate the silence. Okay, all right, we see a little bit of an exit there. Okay. All right, now that was, that was beginner level cave. That was truly beginner level, and they lets you off here where you can inevitably see the Liberty Bell riverboat come by. But uh, that's 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 beginner level cave. If you are interested in visiting Tom Sawyer Island, I recommend doing it first thing when it opens at 11. You obviously can visit it any time between 11 and dusk. That's when it closes. But especially during the summer months. There's gonna be a lot of rain. And when it rains or lightnings, that means they have to shut down the raft boats that get you to and from uh, Tom Sawyer Island, which means you could either be stranded here or there's no way you're gonna get to this island. Okay. Oh, it's cold in here. Uh, now we're in pitch black. Pitch black. Oh. Look, I don't know what, I don't know what's in there, but I don't, I don't want any part of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a face. It says, it's Sage, you do not belong here. Face, I know. Oh, you can kind of hear bats too. Ooh, a little cavern in here. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. I think we've had enough caves. We've been serene. We've been terrified. So let's head back to the mainland. That's what I'm calling it. And uh, keep knocking off these bad boys. Before we keep moving on, let's move on to another thing that you said uh, that I'd never be able to find in the Magic Kingdom. And you said five hidden speakers. Now, Disney World is all about immersing you into whatever story or land that you're in. And a big part of immersion is one, they do a lot of smells. There's a lot of uh, smells that they pump into the area, but a big one is sound. Um, whether it be, you know, crickets or music or talking. I don't mean real talking. I mean like people pretending to talk somewhere within a window. They have to disguise these speakers in order for you to stay within the story because if you just saw speakers lying around, it, it would take you out of the story like that. So while I'm over here in uh, Frontierland, Big Thunder Mountain, they have this great um, kind of country western, old time country western music playing to kind of give, give you the feel of that you're in the old west, you're in the wild, wild west. And these crates up there, that's a speaker. Let's pump in the background music into uh, into the land. It's a great way that they've hidden, um, hidden some music within the land, but also kept kept you within the story. So uh, let's keep on rocking. We'll find some more. But I think I'm gonna head back to do my last uh, conflict, uh, where, I'm, where I would find conflict within Magic Kingdom. Now, I will say I'll try to point out some of the less obvious uh, hidden speakers because some they do a really good job. 
They're like, wow, I had no idea that this was even a speaker. And then some they do like a not so good job. They're like, well, here's a square in the in the wall. Let's let's put a speaker here. Like this. That's a speaker. It's not very well hidden, but that's alright. You know, but we, we, we're, we're trying out here. They're gonna do their best with hiding things or disguising speakers as other things. For example, a crate. Sometimes it's a birdhouse. The birdhouse is a speaker. Birdhouse speakers. Now, for some lands, there is a go-to, uh, like, oh, we're gonna, uh, all of our speakers can be uh, this. For frontier land, it's crates. It's big crates. For Liberty Square, it happens to be birdhouses, another the birdhouse. And this is our last moment of conflict, the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion is a slow-moving dark ride that puts you on a doom buggy and gives you a grand tour of the Haunted Mansion where, where there are 999 ghosts. And they're inviting you to be the last one, to be the, the, the 1,000th ghost. Practicing that There's always my way. thing is filled with conflict you yourself are you know however you, you want to view it you're either trying to escape the haunted mansion you are potentially undead after you fall out of the attic and now you're one of them I mean there's so much spooky conflict uh, definitely a classic one as well uh, I think this attraction is really interesting because originally when they were building it it was going to be a walkthrough attraction like a, a house of horrors walkthrough attraction and then it became more of a ride. It was going to be more of a wax museum. So I'm, I'm definitely glad it did not go that route. But I think we can definitely cross off. We found our moments of conflict here at Magic Kingdom. Thank you for putting me to the test. Uh, so I got a few more to go of, of different tasks that you said that I cannot find here at the Magic Kingdom. So let's keep on going. I am here in New Fantasyland for the Gaston's Tavern. Above Gaston's Tavern, where you can hear uh, the music coming from is actually from on the roof. Up on this tower, we see the brick right there. That's where the music is coming from, hidden speaker. It's a brick, but it's actually material that lets sound get through. I don't know what it is, but there's a speaker behind there, so cool. Back here in New Fantasyland, let's cross off another one. You guys want me to find a hidden Mickey that's not actually a hidden Mickey. And I was like, what? But then I think I kind of knew, I, I kind of got an idea about what you might mean. Uh, something that's not like your typical hidden Mickey. So this is a, this is a hidden steamboat Willie. Here at Under the Sea Adventure of the Little Mermaid, there is a hidden steamboat Willie, which is kind of Mickey Mouse, but not. So it's a hidden Mickey, but not a hidden Mickey. Let's go. You'll actually find this hidden steamboat Willie at the exit of Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. That's where the exit is. And right here, you can see this. Right there, you can kind of see, there is the wheel, 
There's Steamboat Willie. There's his, you can see the shape of his nose and his smile and his hat. When you get it at the right angle with the, with the rocks combined, see if he, oh, there we go. That, that makes a little more sense. He's now driving the boat. So there is a hidden Steamboat Willie. It's a hidden Mickey that's not really a hidden Mickey. Now when the Imagineers were creating New Fantasyland, they must have been on something else. Because I love the, the rock work that they've done here, especially the fact that different rocks create that one uh, image, you know what I mean? So they put a couple different rocks together and based on how you look at it, that's then you get the image. Also, there's a hidden Mickey here at the uh, same place under the sea, a journey, of a, little, a journey of a Little Mermaid, where it's a, a hidden Mickey that only comes out once a year. On Mickey Mouse's birthday, when the sun hits in directly the right location, you will see the image of Mickey Mouse on the floor. Like the way that the sun hits it, you'll see Mickey Mouse on the floor. And I was like, whoa. I mean, that, that alone, that alone is a salaried position, if you know what I mean, to figure that out. Welcome to Storybook Circus. This is gonna be where uh, you find Dumbo, the Barnstormer, and uh, Casey Jr. Splash Pad, as well as you can uh, go to Pete's uh, si Silly Sideshow where you can meet some fun characters. And we're actually gonna head back here to this shaded area in the back. And during Halloween parties and things like that, they tend to use this space for other things. But this is another quiet, place that's away from the crowds. As you can see, there is almost no one here that is perfect uh, for anyone who has any sensory problems or just wants to get away for a bit. Maybe you have multiple kids. One kid can hang out here and the other kid can actually go to Casey Jr.'s splash pad, get wet, cool off a little bit. As well as in this area, there is a very, very family oriented, specifically for kids. There's the barn from a roller coaster as well as Dumbo. Dumbo's in this area. I, have, I feel decompressed. I've let the sun wash off for a second. I don't, I don't hear anybody screaming. Now we will brave, brave the unknown once more, shall we? I think we're gonna have to head up Tomorrowland one more time, and then we're gonna head to Main Street uh, for a, a, a couple different things. Uh, and these are probably gonna be my hardest to find. I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm actually, there's one that I'm specifically nervous about. Uh, that I, I think that you that you may have stumped me. Uh, so good for you. But uh, let's head to, to let's head to Tomorrowland one last time, and then uh, we'll keep on trucking down this list. Man, I, I felt like I was on a roll. Then I saw the rest of this list, and well, you might have gotten me. But it is currently 12:30. It is in the, during peak time, the dead of summer, and Carousel of Progress has no wait time. So again, an, an attraction that you can get on in the middle of the day with zero weight is the Carousel of Progress. Okay, all right, we're moving on. We're moving on, I got sidetracked. So the People Mover was recommended to me uh, as something that would be a good quiet place for um, uh, sensory issues or just a place to decompress. The People Mover is a train-esque ride that takes you high above all of Tomorrowland uh, where you can get a unique perspective of Tomorrowland. You can see within different rides, different stores. You can even see some cool uh, replicas of Epcot and uh, just uh, a, a relaxing ride throughout all of Tomorrowland. Now here's where this is true. Yes, this is a thousand percent a more relaxed ride. You've got the wind in your hair, uh, it's cool, it's it's quiet-esque, but it's not perfect for people with sensory issues because it does go in complete darkness and then it takes you into the bright sun, you know, and there's a lot of that because you're going in and out of, uh, in and outdoors. You think darkness would be great for sensory and sometimes it is not. So I also want to be very clear when it comes to this submission, this question, uh, I am not an expert. Everyone's version of sensory intake uh, is different. So again, um, these are just things that I have noticed within my experience, but take it with a grain of salt. And over here in Adventureland, a fun hidden speaker that I think is interesting because they tried to, one, integrate it with the signage, but also, uh, as you can see, on this side, they've got kind of like a behind the sign, they've got a drum, and then they tried to match that drum on this side. That little thing right there, 
that is, that's that's where the speaker is. Let's see if we can see better from the other side. We've got the drum on that side and they tried to kind of make it work over there as well. All right, hidden speakers, knocking these out. All right, here we are on Main Street, USA. Basically, you're welcome into uh, the Magic Kingdom. Uh, but we're gonna head into the, into the Emporium and I think we're gonna knock out two of these. The first one I have to shout out, Breed Love. Thank goodness for this. Uh, we recently just did a challenge where I trapped Breed Love at the Magic Kingdom until he completed as many obstacles as, as, as I could throw at him. And he had to go to the Emporium and find the most expensive thing and the least expensive thing. The least expensive thing was a dollar. And the task that was given to me is find something at Disney World that's a dollar. That's only a dollar. That can be extremely difficult here at Magic Kingdom uh, because, you know, or just in Disney in general because everything is a tad expensive. Look at these fans. Hold on now. Hold on now. Oh, the hat box goes. That's... RJ, this is for you. Everything. That's everything. But if you go to the register and you ask for the small reusable bag, each one is about 99 cents. So you can definitely check out the video to confirm it, but uh, those small bags at the register, uh, they are 99 cents. So boom, we found our thing that is worth a dollar. I'm pretty sure you guys got me on this one. Uh, this one's gonna be really tough and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to complete it, but uh, you've asked me to find something of the great mouse detective here in Magic Kingdom. So the only thing that I can't imagine that might be a great mouse detective is a pin. But like, can we look at this Halloween stuff just for a second? This is, I love all of this. Uh, amazing, just one bite. Oh, I love Halloween. I love the villains. This is the conflict I'm talking about. This is what's needed. So let's head over to the pin area. The Great Mouse Detective is definitely an older movie where uh, there's a detective. Uh, he is a mouse. There are the pins. Oh, we've got Powerline Goofy. That's fun. Y'all know me. I love. Oh, we got Powerline. Powerline. Powerline Max. Powerline. Love it. Ah, uh, Mr. Toad. So. That, I think, is, what is that? Is that Aristocats? Fox and the Hound, Oliver and Company? I don't know. It's an older one, which, which gives me a little bit of hope. Wait a minute. I cannot believe it. It's the Great Mouse Detective. Yes. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe I, we did it. It's the Great Mouse Detective. Okay, I believe we only have one more left. And mm, this one, uh, I would try to complete it earlier, but apparently, the, I, I, I swear they're raising prices. I, I remember this being less expensive, like maybe a month ago. But we need to find something that's under five dollars, and I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna do a Dasani water bottle because yeah, that, that's that's under five dollars. Trying to find something that's, you know, a little more Disney-esque. So I'm actually gonna try and get to, wait, I'm not done. I completely forgot. I almost completely just bombed the challenge because I was so fixated on uh, under $5 Disney thing. So this is actually Center Street because it is located in the center of Main Street. I'm actually gonna cross off two things on the list here. This is actually a really great area uh, to be quiet and de uh, decompress. Not a lot of people back here. It's away from the crowds. That's why I'm lowering my voice a little bit. And I just wanna make sure you're able to hear this. Nothing, quiet. Um, now there are a few times that it is not quiet here on Center Street. Obviously it is very close to Main Street. So if there's a parade happening or happily ever after, definitely not super quiet. Happily Ever After is the nighttime fireworks spectacular and Festival of Fantasy is the parade that goes down Main Street. So it's probably gonna get pretty loud. But at the time that it definitely is gonna get very loud is during the flag retreat. The flag retreat is where they take down the American flag that's in, uh, that's closer towards the front of Main Street. And every day they choose a veteran, uh, someone who served uh, in the armed forces to help, uh, help them do that. 
the Dapper Dams are there, uh, the Main Street Band is there. And at the end of the Flag Retreat, they walk down Main Street as far as they can go and make a hard right onto Center Street. Uh, so that way the band and everybody can go through these double doors and the Dapper Dams and they say thank you to the veteran. Uh, and, it's, and it's a big ordeal, but it definitely can get pretty loud then as well. The other big thing to note is that yes, and it's a cast member only door. So if you are using Center Street to decompress, hang out, relax, just be mindful, be courteous because cast members are coming back and forth through those doors. And finally, let's round out the uh, uh, looking for hidden speakers with some immersion. So on the second floor of Center Street, you'll see voice singing, private lessons, music and dance lessons, ballet, tap, and waltz. If you listen carefully, you will be able to hear tap dancing, piano playing, potentially some people warming up on the other side of those windows. Now you can kind of see there's one panel at the bottom. One brown panel is lighter than the other one. The darker one is obviously where the sound is coming through. But it's a really unique way to bring uh, Center Street and Main Street to life in general is to make you believe that there are actually people rehearsing or singing or practicing up there. Before we leave, I'm going to find that Disney thing that's under $5 or $5 or under. For that, I think I have to go to the Main Street Confectionery. The Main Street Confectionery is your one-stop shop for all things sweet here on Main Street. Now inside the Main Street Confectionery, you're going to find um, enclosed, when I say enclosed, I mean in the cases that are probably going to be your fresher sweets, like your caramel apples, your fudge, things like that. But of course, you can always get prepackaged things, which heads up, uh, you're taking the risk if you do get something prepackaged. It might not be as fresh, might have been out for a while, might be a little more stale. If you are trying to bring it to a loved one at home, obviously do what you got to do. But uh, I recommend not opting for the caramel apple or the Rice Krispie Treats. The Rice Krispie Treats are probably the first things to get a little bit stale. I would go something along the lines of the Color Kitchen, grab some fun M&Ms, get, uh, get a Mickey-shaped lollipop, you know, those kind of things. There's also the candied corn all the way in the back, which I think is fun and different, and not a lot of people actually take advantage of it. So you pick your popcorn, then you select a syrup, should be anything milk chocolate, dark chocolate, you know. Uh, then you combine with whatever candies you want. You can do M&M's, a Twix bar, Skittles. And then you can uh, watch these amazing cast members make your creation. And they put them in a fun bowl. And it's a fun treat that you can have with you for the rest of the day. They are rather large. And they can be kind of messy depending on what uh, syrup you put on them. So be careful. But again, we are here for something that is Disney that is under $5. Disney-esque related. And this might be something as simple like a Rice Krispie Treat or a lollipop. That's $6.49. Uh, $5.49. $4.50. $4.49. So again, uh, it's still a little pricey, but I'm just glad we were able to find it. Thank you guys for this amazing list of things you think I'd never find in the Magic Kingdom. I think you guys took it easy on me, just, just a tad. So let me know if you want us to, uh, you know, ramp up the stakes a little bit higher next time. That's on you if you want to start sending me harder lists, which I'm down to do. Let me know if you want us to do this in uh, some other parks. Thanks for coming along. I had a blast. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch the video where I trap Breedlove right here in Magic Kingdom. Bye.